Hello guys, continuing with the INICT revision series and today's video is all about the important signs and the name tests you want, I want you to remember. The most important thing I want you to remember is the Carvoisius law. So you might have read this uh, and I'm definitely sure you wouldn't have understood it so well because when the examiner changes a little bit in the question, you get confused. For example, take a look at this. So a 55 year old male present with painless jaundice and a palpable gallbladder the likely causes now this is a simple question where you know in case of painless jaundice and a palpable gallbladder you know the most common cause is carcinoma and a pancreas but if the question was multiple best type like take a look at this example which of the following would be the cause is asking you the differential diagnosis of painless progress to jaundice and, and until and unless you know the Carvoisius law perfectly like you have to know the law and you have to know the exceptions for that and if you don't you can't answer a question like this now here the answer was both carcinoma head of pancreas and Meresis syndrome that is option b that is b and c but you may ask me how can Meresis syndrome cause palpable gallbladder or painless progressive jaundice and choledocolithesis also presents with jaundice right but why is there no palpable gallbladder there so let me explain it and clear the confusion once and for all what i wanted to remember in Corvisius law is three words that is Obstructive jaundice, palpable gallbladder, and not due to gallstones. You just have to remember these three keywords. The Carvoisius law goes like this: In a case of obstructive jaundice, the palpable gallbladder is never due to gallstones. So, what does this mean? If you have a patient with jaundice and if you are able to palpate his gallbladder, then it's not due to, due to gallstones or it's not due to cholecholithiasis. But it has exceptions, and in case of double impaction that is stone in GB as well as CBD. The second would be oriental cholangiohepatitis and the third is Meresis syndrome and don't worry I'll explain in detail about this so that you will never forget. Suppose this is your gallbladder, this is a cystic duct, this is your right and left hepatic duct and with joints to form the CBD. Then you have the duodenum along with the pancreas here with it and this is the ampoule of water. So now let's suppose there is a growth here. It's called the periampullary carcinoma which is either can be near the head of the pancreas or can be in the duodenum or can be ampullary variant of cholangiocarcinoma. So these three carcinoma are called the periampullary carcinoma and when this happens there is obstruction of the biliary tree. So now the bile flow is obstructed here and the bile keeps collecting. So there is dilatation of the entire biliary tree. Let me mark it with another color. So there is entire biliary tree dilatation along with the gallbladder. So now you can see there is GB distension, right? So in a case of carcinoma pancreas, in a case of any periampullary carcinoma, this is what happens. Bile flow, the bile flow is obstructed and the entire biliary tree is dilated. So you're going to have intrahepatic biliary radical dilatation. You're going to have dilated CBD and you are also going to have distended gallbladder so you can palpate it. But what happens when there is a calculi? If there is stones here, then there is inflammation of the gallbladder and later it gets fibrosed. And if by chance one of these stones slips here and is stuck in the CBD, then you call it the cholecholithiasis. But here you cannot palpate the gallbladder because you know the gallbladder is fibrosed or shrunk due to chronic inflammation. So be careful because look at the curvature slots. In a case of obstructive jaundice, if you are able to palpate the gallbladder, it's not due to gallstones. So condition satisfied, the gallbladder is shrunk. In a case of cholecholithiasis or cholecholithiasis, you cannot palpate the gallbladder. But let's suppose the stone is not coming from the gallbladder. What if the stone directly forms here? Then the biliary tree will again dilate, right? The proximal thing can dilate. So can the gallbladder because the stone is not from the gallbladder. The stone is forming in the CBD on its own or it's called a primary cholecholithiasis. And how does it form? It's, it forms due to a parasitic in, infection known as clonorchis sinensis, also called as oriental cholangiohepatitis. So this is the first exception where you saw cholangiohepatitis. Now the second possibility can be you have the gallbladder and you have a stone at the Hartman spots. So now what happens? Now the gallbladder is going to be distended. So you can palpate the gallbladder. But there is no obstruction to the bile flow. So you need a stone here as well. 
so now you have palpable gallbladder as well you have obstructive jaundice as well so this is called the double impaction which is the second exception to the Kerouac's law and remember there can be an option of mucosal of gallbladder as well in the options but just mucosal will not cause obstructive jaundice because if the stone is stuck at the Hartman's pouch it causes only distension of the gallbladder but it doesn't cause obstructive jaundice so be very careful if only mucosal of gallbladder or if empyema gallbladder is in the option it's it's not the cause of obstructive jaundice but if mirizi syndrome is given what is mirizi syndrome exactly the stone gets stuck in the cystic duct so later due to chronic inflammation the stone which is stuck in the cystic duct is going to compress the common hepatic duct or the common bile duct so this is what it will look like later so the stone has now obstructed caused the blockage of the bile so again the gallbladder is going to be distended and you will be having obstructive jaundice as well so mirizi syndrome was the third exception for kerouac's law so revise it again what was kerouac's law it is in a case of obstructive jaundice if you are able to palpate the gallbladder then it's almost never due to gallstones except in these three cases that is if there is double impaction that is both in gallbladder and cbd that is your first cause or you have a primary cbd stone that is due to clonorchis sinensis or also known as oriental cholangiohepatitis or in case of mirizi syndrome next i want you to remember the three signs which you see in acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis that is the great turner sign the fox sign and the cullen sign these three are the ecchymosis or bruise you can see in the, in the patient in a case of hemorrhagic pancreatitis and what is great on a sign you see ecchymosis in the flank region that is due to a retroperitoneal hemorrhage which get, gets collected in the flank region and fox sign is when the retroperitoneal bead trickles down the ileosoas and is collected below the inguinal ligament in the patient's upper thigh and cullen sign is when you have ecchymosis in the upper umbilical region that is due to intraperitoneal bleed which trickles down along the falciform ligament and the discoloration happens around the umbilicus so take a look at this question first bluish discoloration around the umbilicus indicates is it retroperitoneal bleed peritoneal bleed from pancreatitis intramural hematoma ruptured ectopic pregnancy select the right option is it b only is it a and b or is it all of the above or is it b and d see what is this bluish discoloration around the umbilicus suggests us it's called the cullen sign right and it happens whenever there is blood or hemorrhage trickling down the falciform ligament and is getting collected around the umbilicus so retroperitoneal bleed doesn't cause this because if there is retroperitoneal bleed then you you're going to have the gray turner sign or the fox sign and intramural hematoma can it cause bluish discoloration no because intramural hematoma is hematoma collected in the artery and it doesn't cause bluish discoloration of the skin and what about ruptured ectopic can it cause cullen sign Yes, it can, because it is an intraperitoneal bleed, right? And the blood can trickle down the falciform and can get collected around the umbilicus. So yes, both peritoneal bleed from pancreatitis and ruptured ectopic are the answer. So B and D are the right answer. So make sure you are ready for these kind of questions in the INI seat. The next sign I want you to understand is is called the Murphy sign. So I want you to know the diagnosis, how is it performed, and what are the findings. Murphy sign is when the examiner is palpating the abdomen and when he is trying to palpate the gallbladder and he, he asks the patient to take a deep breath and when the examiner's hand is in the right hypochondrium just below the costal margin and the patient is asked to take a deep breath he'll stop breathing midway because of pain and where do you see this condition you see this in acute cholecystitis because when the patient breathes the diaphragm moves down and the gallbladder just touches the examiner's hand so the patient feels the pain and he stops breathing midway that's called the murphy sign and an image based question can be asked a video based question can be asked or true or false kind of questions can be asked now take a look at this mcq on deep inspiration patient halts breath due to pain when the examiner presses the right upper quadrant this is called what and you know this is murphy sign because you already know about it what about boas sign remember boas sign is also seen in acute cholestitis and what is that that is hyperesthesia in the infrascapular region or the patient will have more pain sensation when they palpate the infrascapular region on his right side due to acute cholecystitis the gallbladder will be distended or inflamed and when you touch either from the front or from the behind 
in both conditions patient is going to experience pain one is the murphy sign one is the boas sign i don't want you to remember both the next important signs i want you to remember are in appendicitis out of that the first is called the rosing sign what is rosing sign in a patient with acute appendicitis if you palpate the left iliac fossa the patient will experience pain in the right iliac fossa and why does this happen when you compress the left iliac fossa the pressure will push the colonic gas towards the cecum and when cecum distends the patient experiences pain in his right iliac fossa that is the rosing sign you palpate in the le- left iliac fossa patient experiences pain in right iliac fossa the next sign is soas sign so what is soas sign when you extend the hip joint the patient experiences pain in right iliac fossa and why does this happen when you extend the hip the soas muscle is stretched and it irritates the appendix in a case of retrocecal appendix so remember this soas sign is positive only in retrocecal appendix and which is the most common position of the appendix so a question may be which of the following sign is most commonly seen in acute appendicitis and if you see soas sign then mark that and another sign is called the obturator sign what is the obturator sign when you flex and internally rotate the thigh then the patient experience pain in his right iliac fossa and this is seen in case of pelvic appendix so remember the three signs the rosing sign soas sign and the obturator sign and when are they seen and what is the most common type so you can be asked match the following type of question in these kind of signs next one is the blumberg sign which you see in case of peritonitis so when you palpate the abdomen and release the pressure the patient is going to have rebound tenderness now take a look at this image redness in the temporal region or ecchymosis in the temporal region this is called the battle sign which you see in a case where patients with head injury has a temporal bone fracture and if the patients have frontal bone fracture then you have a sign called raccoon's eye now the next three signs are really confusing that is the troisier sign troseo sign and there is something also called the troseo syndrome so don't confuse between these three troseo sign is when the patient will have a carpopedal spasm whenever the bp cuff is inflated and this you see in a case of hypocalcemia whereas troseo syndrome is migratory thrombophlebitis which you see in a case of malignancy and troisier sign is enlarged left supraclavicular lymph node or also known as verkos node so make sure don't confuse between these three troseo sign is carpopedal spasm syndrome is migratory thrombophlebitis and troisier sign is enlarged verkos lymph node and what is the chostek sign it is twitching of the facial muscle whenever you tap 2 cm in front of the ear lobule or whenever you stimulate the facial nerve patient is going to have twitching of the facial muscles this is also a sign in a case of hypocalcemia so remember video based questions can be asked or image based questions can be asked or match the following can be asked so you have to be ready for all kinds of question and don't get confused whenever you see a similar confusing option like this the next i want you to remember are the three signs in case of dvt the first is called the homan sign that is when you dorsiflex the ankle of the patient he is going to experience pain in his calf the next is moser sign which is when you try to move the calf the patient he is going to experience pain and what is lisker sign lisker sign is, is when you percuss on the anterior aspect of tibia the patient is going to experience pain so make sure you remember all the three and be ready for a match the following kind of question on this and there are two more signs i want you to remember which can be asked in a case of a trauma patient or in a case of pediatric patient so one is called the dance sign which is the child's right iliac fossa is going to be empty or it's going to be really hollow you can't palpate anything there and where do you see this sign this is seen in in a case of interception so what happens here is the ilium telescopes into the colon and everything is going to come up in the right hypochondrium and the right iliac fossa is going to feel empty and another sign is kher sign that is the patient is going to experience the left shoulder tip pain in a case of splenic trauma so whenever the patient has splenic trauma the left hemidiaphragm is irritated due to which the phrenic nerve is stimulated and the patient is going to experience left shoulder pain that is called the kher sign so that's it for today's video i really hope you revise all these signs once once more before going to the exam because there are very high chances that mcq on these sign will come in this exam as well share this video to your friend as well and don't forget to watch the previous four videos i have already uploaded on the inicet revision and don't forget to subscribe because a lot of interesting videos are on its way thank you so much for watching